looking at what you're trying to do. To my Swinomish people in my Northwest natives, to my Kickapoo, don't worry about all the haters. Kiowa, Comanche, Shawnee, Blood, White Mountain, Apache, they prep on they mud. Minnesota, Red Lake, White Earth, Leech Lake, the East Coast, Indians with White Ranchy State. We've got Cherokee, Choctaw, Chippewa, Chickasaw, Green and Creek Peak, they deep just look at y'all. Florida, natives in my seminal strong. I go ahead and read, come on, I'll write you a song. Arabo, Yaki, on my Shoshone, can't forget my California Indian homies, Aboriginal Canadians, running from police, Arizona homies, who from no homies. This song isn't just for y'all, I'm lying, from Alaska to Inuit, to my Southside Mayans, Anahuac, Aslan, to all Mexica, El Salvador, Peru, and to full blood Inca, my people, how I love my people, passion for the justice of my people. Broken for the hunger of my people, crying like a mother for my people, my people, my people, my people, my people, my, my, my people. How I love my people, passion for the justice of my people. Yeah, yeah, I love you, my people. Woo! Thank you so much. Yay. You guys, my name is MC Red Cloud. Came all the way from Hawthorne, California to be here with you guys. It's a good 13 hour drive from LA. Um, just to come here and spend Indian market with you guys. We brought our books yesterday. Our number one seller, yeah, Indigenous Legends. We sold out. We sold completely out. Woo! This is all you have left. These posters. So take those posters. Yeah, I drew it, dude. Crystal wrote it. I drew it. This man helped produce it. So, uh, I know exactly what you guys think when you see me. Hey, this guy draws coloring books. <laughs> uh, it wasn't always so. Uh, my mom was only 17 when she had me. 17 years young, just 17. Gosh. How old were you when you had your first kid? Oh my gosh, I didn't want to know. 31. 31, oh, that's great. I wish yes. my mom was that responsible, yeah. but she had me at 17. <laughs> Uh, my mom is Huichor from Jalisco, Mexico, Northern, and it's the Wirikuta people. We were people of the peyote, people of the blue deer. 17 when she had me and came to LA and was born in LA. My dad is Mexican in Guadalajara. I never knew, knew him. I don't know him. I don't know what he looks like. I imagine he's really handsome. <laughs> <laughs> um, and by the time I was about eight or nine months, um, my birth mother and uh, my babysitters, they had a talk. And they came to the conclusion that it would be best if I was raised by my babysitters. So I wasn't even raised by my birth mother. I was raised by a wonderful Chicano family in the middle of LA. Here's Inglewood, here's Compton, here's Hawthorne. I'm from Hawthorne, that inside that awesome ghetto sandwich of craziness. So I was raised in LA and I was raised around the, the Chicano culture. And it wasn't, I didn't know that wasn't my family. I started growing up and then slowly but surely, I started finding out things. So my dad was in a gang. My dad had a big mustache and he had the stereotypical cholo voice. Hey, little bato, what are you doing this here? It's very piercing, you know, and he always walked around with this beer in his hand and I always looked up to my dad and he was covered in tattoos and he was so cool and he'd wash his low rider car and I wanted to be just like him. And I have two big brothers. One's name is Kiko. Kiko is the brownest thing you've ever seen in your life. But with green eyes. Ooh. Now, that fool is covered in tattoos to his head. His face is naked and he's just got these piercing eyes. And every time he gets upset, I would just cry from just his voice. Hey, little brother. Where's all my snacks? <laughs> so when we were young, we would collect video games. We would have, you guys, you guys like video games? So when we were kids, me and your mom, we had this video game called Nintendo. And Nintendo was the greatest thing in the world. It, it was old school, we had a blow on it for it to work. And you put it in and hopefully it works. So when we were young, we played Nintendo. Now my brother Kiko, I think he must have robbed a Nintendo truck because we had every single Nintendo game. Now imagine being in kindergarten and there's towers and towers and towers in my living room. So my friends would come over and go, oh my God. You've got all these video games. That's incredible. And I'd be like, yeah. So I started feeling cool. I started getting this feeling like, oh man, the cool kids dig me. Even though they just dug coming to my house to play video games. 
but all my friends were little thieves too. So they would steal the video games that Kiko stole from <laughs> the Toys R Us or whatever. So Kiko would come home and there'd be a bunch of empty spots. And he noticed all the empty spots. And he'd look at me and he goes, hey, little bucket. <laughs> Where's all my video games? <laughs> I think my friend stole it. <laughs> well, you're not my real brother. <laughs> we found you floating in the LA River. <laughs> it went through one ear and out the other. I thought he was just being mean, eh? And I have another brother. His name is Big Bubba. Big Bubba is a perfectly round little Mexican Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> perfectly. And he likes to stash snacks underneath his bed. Twinkies, cupcakes, chips, soda, everything underneath his bed like he's hibernating for the winter or something. And so when my friends would come over, I'd like to be very hospitable. So I'd give everybody all the snacks. Here's some Twinkies. I'm thirsty. Do you have Dr. Pepper? No, we're kind of poor. We have Dr. Thunder. <laughs> what do you want? But I'd give everything away and Big Bubba gets home and, <gasps> hey, fool, where's all my snacks at, fool? Uh, my friend made it, I'm sorry. Well, you're not even my real brother, fool. Uh, we found you on the doorstep, fool. Uh, we felt sorry for you. <laughs> so finally I ran up to my mom. My mom, oh my God, mom. Kiko says he found me floating in the river. Papa <laughs> says he found me on the doorstep. <laughs> Is it true? My dad has his beard and goes, hey, I might as well tell him. <laughs> 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 and my mom, you know how moms hold you and they rock you and my boy, oh gosh, and, and she gives me the talk. And she goes, hey, look at your brothers over there and they're standing on it. Look, at, they came out terrible. They look like walking newspapers with tattoos all over their faces. And I'd go, yeah, they're terrible brothers. But you, my boy, we got to pick you. We got to choose you. And you're my son, and I love you, and I don't care what anybody says, you're my boy. And I think, and my mom is so tough. If anybody has any problem with that, you tell them to come see your mom. <laughs> so that's my mom in a nutshell. Okay, then who's my mom? If you know the lady that comes by once a month to drop off $100? I don't like that lady. Yeah. Do I have to go back with her? No, no, no. So that's an introduction to my childhood. It's all the way to kindergarten. So I grew up in LA, you guys, which is different in Santa Fe or New Mexico or anywhere around here. It's so crowded. There's so many people. It's Indian market every day over there. Every day crowded. Everybody's walking around moving fast. By the time I was in sixth grade, okay, junior high school, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, we had 1,500 kids in my school. 1,500, overcrowded. Half the school's black. Half the school's Mexican in LA, you guys are Mexican. Half the school's Mexican. <laughs> I remember you guys, the day that changed my life. I'm in the cafeteria, I'm eating tater tots, I'm minding my business, and I walk outside, and there's about 15 minutes before the bell rings, you can have a little recess, you know? And I see a bunch of kids running past me. And they're running to the grass area. What does that mean? Fight. It's a fight. So I run too. <laughs> I want to see the fight. And so I get there, you guys, and there are these eighth grade kids, these thick eighth grade black kids. And they're in each other's face and they're just giving each other the stink eye. <laughs> and then they're bumping shoulders. What's up, homie? What's up, fool? Come on then. Come on then. They're doing that little dance. Now, now I'm inside. I got my I'm so anxious and I'm so excited. Now there's 15, 25 kids gathered around. And I'm a little shrimp and I'm trying to look over at <laughs> And then the two guys start getting in each other's face some more. What's up, homie? I'm gonna kill you. I said, oh God, don't kill each other. Just fight. <laughs> Just fight. I'm not ready for this in my life. <laughs> okay, so boom. They start mad dogging each other. And then finally, one of the kids, the big eighth graders, he goes, hey, somebody kick a beatbox so I could serve this, sir. <laughs> and I said, what the heck does that even mean? <laughs> what does that mean? And then I thought he was going to kick a box and then serve him some cafeteria food. And then the guy next to me goes, yeah, I'll kick a beatbox. And he covers his mouth, you guys, and he makes a beat with his mouth. And my head starts doing this. 
controller. And then all the kids around me start going, oh! And I start copying them. I go, oh, what's going on? And these two guys that I thought were gonna fight ended up having a rap battle. They ended up throwing rhymes at each other. They started making fun of each other. Yo mama, yo daddy, yo bald headed granny. And I was there laughing at everything that they were saying to each other. They were making fun of each other's moms. Your mom's so whack, you can't even rap. Your mom has an afro with a chin strap. Oh! And I picture his mom with a chin strap at Walmart. Just... <laughs> and then they start making fun of each other's shoes. Your shoes ain't fresh. You thought those were Jordans, but you got those at Payless. Oh! And I was wearing Payless. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Tell that fool. <laughs> you guys are 35, 45 kids now. Every time they say something funny, we all start laughing. And then the bell rings. And then they shake hands, bam, 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 and they walk away. This guy walks away, and everybody's behind him. Man, you're the best. You kill that guy. This guy's walking away, everybody's, yo, you're the best rapper in the school, homie, yeah. And I'm standing there, you know, like in the movies where the sun rises behind you and it sets, and I'm just like, wow. That's incredible. What is this? I've never seen anything like it in my life. And I think that's the day that I knew what I wanted to be when I grew up. I said, now when I grow up, I want to be an eighth grade black kid. <laughs> it didn't quite work out. You know what I mean? But that moment, I was like, yo, I want to make rap music. I want to learn how to do this. So I saw one of those kids walking around school. And I came up to him, I said, hey man, that was really cool what you did. I, I sounded like Mickey Mouse when I was a little boy. Hey man, what did you do yesterday? That was great. <laughs> and so I told him how much I liked his stuff, and he must have felt sorry for me, because he was like, oh. He probably looked around to see if he could talk to anybody else. And then he looks at me and he goes, all right, so this is what you do, man. You just open your mouth and the words will come out. You just try to make it rhyme, you have to practice every day. Whenever you see something, rap about it, and the words will come out. All right, little homie? <laughs> I think I made it. After that, I was like, okay, I'm gonna rap about that guy with the blue t shirt. I really hope his shirt doesn't hurt. And there goes the lady. Uh, I suck at this. I'm not good at this, you know? But I ended up getting better, you guys. And I practiced every day. And I got better and better. And before you know it, I'm in high school. And before you know it, I'm a senior. And I'm graduating high school. A little Mexican Indian boy whose mom didn't want him, whose dad didn't want him. Graduated with a 3.5. I think I'm the first guy in my family tree. You know, and after that I got signed to a record deal, to a record label. Back in the day when we had, back in the day we had record labels. <laughs> now you kids are on YouTube. <laughs> but back in the day we had record labels and I got signed to a deal on Koch Records. It was a number one independent. Uh, hip hop label, they had G Unit, they had Bone Thugs and Harmony, they had all these cool groups, and they signed me. Red Cloud, and I sold 40,000 units. 40,000 discs were moved, and I've been to every single city, and I've been to every single state. And you know what? Life gave me a plate, and it said, You know what? You'll probably end up in jail, you'll probably end up in a gang, you'll probably end up dead. And, and, my, and I sure had the circumstances to match it. You know, my dad was involved, all my cousins, all my uncles. I had an emptiness in my heart, you know, not knowing anything, my relationship with my mom, and, and, and everything was just so distraught and just so heartbreaking. I said, man, how can I get over this? And I decided to make a change for myself, to end, to end the, the cycle, right? Yeah. And I think we could all end the cycle, and I feel like I ended the cycle in my family, you know, by, getting, by becoming successful. I'm still being who I am, still cool with my tats and my nice shirt, you know, and tattoos and everything, and I'm still graduating, and I'm still getting everything handed to me that I've ever wanted, you guys. I've been to every state, every city, and then before you knew it, we decided to do something big. I said, babe, let's do something for the people. Because it's cool rapping for yourself. It's real braggadocious, rap is. But when you do something for the people, it's bigger and it's stronger. So I said, what can I do to help the people? She goes, babe, her and her mom, they said, you should do something for the missing and murdered indigenous women. I said, wow. Out here in LA, nobody even talks about that. Well, over there in Canada, it's an epidemic. Over here in the States, it's an epidemic. In Mexico, it's an epidemic. It's like they just take, and they're gone, and they're uncounted for. And there needs to be justice. I go, let's 
Stand in solidarity and draw some attention to this. We contacted KCAL 9, Al Jazeera, we contacted everybody we could, and I started training to break the Guinness World Record. The Guinness World Record for the longest freestyle rap. The longest non-stop rapping, and that record at the moment was 17 hours of non -stop. Can you imagine me rapping for 17 hours? 17 hours. So we trained, and I trained, and I practiced two hours, four hours, eight hours, 10 hours. Okay, I think I can break this record. And in November 28th, 2015, I broke the Guinness World Record, you guys, for 18 hours. So, yeah. And, he, and you mentioned every, you had people on Twitter and Facebook sending in all these names, and he mentioned every single name of, of every woman that was missing. So. That was awesome. It was great. And we, I think we uh, gathered at least $3,000 for uh, Stolen Sisters in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And uh, that's a foundation there where they volunteer to go through the rivers, you know, because the, the criminal department stops, the justice system stops. And so the people don't stop. They still want to search those rivers up and down. So that helps volunteer search. Yeah. So we were able to do that. And that made us feel so good. Um, we won Power 106. It's a huge competition in LA, okay, you guys? 3,000 people entered. Everybody in LA is a rapper. So me and Crystal <laughs> entered this competition and we got voted from 3,000 to 1,000 to 500 to 100. Is this really happening to us? And all of a sudden we're the top 10. And then they make a huge mistake. They say, hey, the top 10, including Lightning Club, Crystal Lightning and Red Club, have to battle to see who the best is. And I go, that's a huge mistake because I'm going to kill all of you. <laughs> There's no way you guys are going to win this. And you guys, we entered, and uh, I'm being silly, but man, we ran through these guys, you know, just a little native couple from LA. And we won, you know, the, the mainstream, not the native award or the indigenous award, that which we have won. Uh, but beating everybody in LA was a different feeling and getting the respect from uh, Kendrick Lamar and Dr. Dre and uh, the game and uh, Nicki Minaj and ASAP Rocky we were able to open up for powerhouse and go on tour and it's life-changing we got a beat from Timbaland who produces all of Justin Timberlake's and Jay-Z's album we got it's pretty much like a rap starter kit after we won that competition and that's where we really started taking off uh, we put out two albums together that have changed the world and I just want to encourage you guys uh, and let you guys know that there's never like a dead end for you. If you chase your dreams, uh, anything is possible. Uh, we used to say follow your dreams and she was like, no, nah, that's lazy. <laughs> Don't just right? follow. Follow your dreams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think if we do I think that's almost wrong. I'm like, I've been telling thousands of people to follow their dreams. And I think that's wrong now. In hindsight, chase your dreams down and tackle them. Okay? And then bite the back of your dreams neck like a wild gazelle. <laughs> okay? That's the new visual for your dreams, okay? Um, we're really excited. You guys want us to do another song for you? Me and Crystal Lightning? Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. burn it down. All right. I got burned down at four power. Oh, let's meet me at the power. Hi, everybody. I'm Crystal Lightning. This is my other half. Crystal Lightning. She's the best. She's an I'm actress. Perfect. She's the. I'm going to introduce you. Okay. Okay. Pretend you don't hear me. Turn Pretend around. like Turn I'm around. not here. Turn around. Turn around. Uh, coming up next, you guys. <laughs> Electric, magical, she's awesome. You might see her on the new series, Outlander, uh, filmed in Scotland. She, she just got a new role in that. You might see her in Kevin Costner's Yellowstone, American Pie Band Camp, Three Ninjas, when you were little kids. Uh, put some, put your hands together and make some noise for Crystal Lightning! Hey everybody, I'm from the Cree Nation all the way up in Canada. Um, I'm Crystal Lightning, I'm Love sharing our hearts with you guys and doing music for you guys and maybe coloring books for you and doing all kinds of cool stuff. So we're gonna do a song for you. This is called Meet Me at the Powwow. We'll finish off with this. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Woo. Check, 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 check,
They're ten dollars. All of our music is on iTunes, and we have music videos on on, on YouTube, just okay. and our Facebook page, Lightning Cloud. Everything. Can we get you to say hello to Dallas Fort Worth and tell you live the whole time? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. <laughs> oh, hang on just a second. Let's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're live. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. My name is MC Red Cloud. I'm from the group Lightning Cloud. I want to say shout out and peace out and much love to Dallas, Fort Worth, DFW, Woo! George Bush Freeway. Here I come. Come say hi. Come say hi to Dallas. Hey everybody, Crystal Lightning here. How you doing? Thanks for coming and check out Lightning Cloud. Hey, we look forward to coming to Fort Worth. Yeah. Bring us to Arlington. Bring us to Six Flags. We'll rock it out for you. How about can you rock to Santa Fe Days in the park? Santa Fe Days, Days in the, in the park. park. I've got the. I've got that. I've got, got that information. You gave us three tickets yesterday. That's girl. right. On it. Yeah. Bring us out. We got a lot of waves on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so oh, much. It was wonderful. Really nice to meet you. Thanks for letting me share. I heard of you. Try to keep you on the live videos. Yeah. Can I then um, send them to your? Uh, yeah. Or tag Lightning okay. Club. Or, okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It was wonderful. So sweet. Had a great time. Okay. We, can we take some of these? Take them. Oh yeah. So there's Eli. She's. Oh, she's we will oh you guys get to keep what you yes. make. You guys know that, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. He's got. We got several live videos of you going on. Okay. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah, so so, so our, our Lightning Cloud Facebook page. I think you. Uh, yes, we got it on there. Yesterday. So okay. Yeah, just tag us there. That'd be okay. great. Oh, we can catch. So we can you check know, it they out. all these like little things on it. Yeah. Let's see if we can figure out how to save it. Oh, that's yours. Were you live too, Missy? Yeah, Mike? I mean, okay. Missy. You guys are on the social media. Yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> right. So we'll go through it. We'll make sure it's all sit through. Okay. Cool. Actually, 